So in the next stage, we'll get on to the second part of the stance phase, which is the mid-stance phase. During this phase, we have maximum flexion or bending of our knee and our ankle. Think of this as an absorption phase. We're actually storing energy for release. It's really, really important that we look at structures during this phase to see that we're actually getting good motion because this is where we need to gather all the energy around to get it released. So let's start with the glutes. Maybe can I get you to lie on your side, please? Either side, doesn't matter. Yeah. So we get on here, we talk about the glutes, we're talking about the glute max, the glute medius, the glute minimus. Okay. And of course, we work on all sides. Are you doing okay there, Mickey? Yep. Okay. So right now I'm just going more lateral. Okay. Just a little bit of motion. You okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So mainly glute max. And guess what? We're going to put a little bit of torsion in there. Okay. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. How much does that change when I start doing that? A oh, lot. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Like you, you feel it when I'm going like this a bit, Yeah, but, that but really then as soon as you start putting that rotation in there, it's just massive. Yeah. So we want to get torsion in there because we want to be as effective as we can in the least amount of time. So I'm just going to change my vector here a little bit and just go up more towards the glute med. Yeah. And of course, in both these, we're going to get the glute minimus too. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is sometimes you'll see a runner come along and then they actually, you'll notice that as they bring their leg down and they're in this phase, that their one hip will drop. So the hip that drops down is the weak hip and you'll see this almost immediately at mid stance. And one day when you can actually confirm this is we could actually go back and we could say, okay, I think there might be a problem in the glute here. And I'd like to test the muscle. Hold this here. Resist hard. Okay, I'm not quite where we need to see it. <laughs> Try it again. Okay, so we'd work on that and we'd retest it to see if it got stronger there. But we definitely worked with the glutes first. The next structure I want to talk about in the mid stance phase is the hamstrings. So let's get on the hamstrings here. So we're talking semi membranosus, semi tendinosus, and the lateral part of the biceps femoris. Doing okay there, Mickey? Yeah. Okay, so. A little bit tight. Now, Mickey, I want you to start. We're going to just move this around a little bit here. Okay? So once again, you add a little bit of torsion in there, and almost immediately things start changing. Okay, what's interesting too, from a palpatory perspective, when you start getting on, for example, the center there, the semimembranosus, and I start going in through a little bit of torsion, I will notice that it actually becomes a lot more palpable. And I can feel the difference in tension between the different layers of structure that I wouldn't feel otherwise. So I'm just going straight down here. You can feel it, but it's not as obvious. Right around there. So if you're looking at a runner's gait in terms of the mid stance and you're thinking hamstrings, you're thinking a, an inability to fully extend the hip or decrease knee flexion. You might also notice that there might be a uh, early or forceful foot strike. Doing okay there? Yeah. So again, we work around all of the hamstrings here till we felt a release to a certain degree, but I would definitely work on both hamstrings in this case. So the next section I want to talk about is the erector spinae, the paraspinal muscles that go straight up and down besides the spinal column. Mickey, can I just grab your shoulders here? Good. So there's a lot of different ways we can work this. I think it's really good if you get in there and actually go inferior and superior and also put a lot of rotation into there. So Mickey, if I just go straight like this, you're doing that to a degree, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. If I go down here, you feel a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Now, if I start getting in and putting a lot more rotation there, how are we feeling there? Oh man, yeah. Huge difference there, right? Yeah. Now, I mean, that was my thumb. Now. Let me just use another part of my hand here. Feel that a bit too? Yeah. Like quite a bit. Yeah. I'm able to actually get a little bit more force in there. So I'm just using the back of my hand here. Is it a little more comfortable too? Yeah. It's more comfortable and I'm actually able to put more force in the area. So the other area way is good, but I find it in a lot of cases not quite as effective. Doing okay? Oh yeah. 
Of course, if you're gonna check one side, let's make sure we're doing the other side. Right, yeah. Doing okay? Oh yeah. Right down there. Now the interesting thing is we, we go, how would I possibly know if someone's having a problem on mid-stance of the stance phase of gait with their erector spinae? Well, there's some really obvious clues. One is excessive forward lean when you see them running, and the other one is overstriding. We're gonna do everything we possibly can to try and get our foot under our center of gravity. And if this is really tight and contracted, you're gonna have a problem there. Doing okay? Oh yeah. Good, excellent. So one of the last structures I wanna go over are the abdominals. Both the primary abdominal region up the center, the rectus abdominis, but the obliques. And we also have the transverse abdominus quite deep. But because of the fascial connections in there, we're able to actually access all of them. So why don't we start out with the obliques here. Mickey, you okay with me get in here? Kind oh, of yeah, around? yeah. Okay, so let me bring this back here. Yeah, what do you notice when I'm on here like this? It's just ripping, I mean pulling. <laughs> <laughs> Into my armpit. I hope it's not ripping. <laughs> But you can feel that all the way from down here along all the, the line way. up there. All okay. the way. And there is a separate video that we actually will be producing. And I'm talking about all of the structures in the upper extremity and how it affects your gait. But uh, this is really important. You okay there? Yeah. Okay. We know obviously we would do both sides. You're going to go a little bit deeper. Okay. Now, this next one, you're going to take your arm back like so. Okay. And you're going to take the top leg back at the same time. Okay. Okay, here. So let's just get on there. Okay. And I'm actually gonna, you okay? Yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Make sure you always ask your patient for permission. Get in there. Okay, bring the leg back. Now I'm taking my hand a bit superior here. Bring the leg right behind and bring the arm back. So you can feel that right in the center. Oh man, yeah. That is pretty intense. Good. And back. Now, the interesting thing about a restriction in the abdominal area is during the mid-stance phase, the foot will actually appear to roll in too much or too little. And you may not be thinking right away, abdominals, how's that got to do with anything? But remember, we are one kinetic chain. I'm going to take this right up a little bit higher. Okay, take it again, back again. Good. So I'm still going superior, straight up. Good, excellent. Okay, when I get up here, closer to the diaphragm, then I'm actually gonna go a little bit inferior. Take it back, put it down. You doing okay? Yep. Can you still feel that a lot? Yeah. In there, but it's a different feeling. It's different, totally different. Yep, and up. Take it down, how would you describe that? Coming down there. It's, I can almost feel it like up in where my diaphragm is, and I feel like it's almost like mm -hmm. you can feel restrictions where my diaphragm right. is, which is something so you don't feel. So we've done a lot of di diaphragmic release work in MSR mm -hmm. back, but this is one area way we can actually just get on the abdominal area, and it does have an effect on the diaphragm, yeah. which is major when it comes to breathing during running. And back. So I'm just demonstrating on one side here, but in reality, we'd always do both sides because the fascial connections are so strong. We don't want to just think that we're actually addressing something just because a person has something symptomatic on one side. We want to take a look at both. This is really effective work.